So the next uh, speakers will be from another continent. We have uh, three continents now, no, two continents, this is another continent. This is Professor Isao Nishiyama. The title of the paper is Earthquake Engineering Research Frameworks BRI's Experience. That will be some of the, 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 the biodata of uh, Professor Isao Nishiyama. He is currently the Vice President of the Building Research Institute, BRI, since 2012. He did his undergraduate, Master and PhD in the University of Tokyo. He started his career as a researcher in BRI and has been holding different positions in BRI since then. He is an expert in the field of structural engineering and earthquake engineering. In 20 07, he became the director of building department, National Institute of Land and Infrastructure <coughs> Management, Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. Without further ado, please welcome Professor Dr. Isao Nishiyama. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, my talk is uh, a physical uh, <coughs> of, uh, topics uh, related to uh, earthquake. So this is a further view of my institute and uh, central part. Uh, we have many very physical facilities, physical laboratories we have. And at the back of these photos, you can see the Mount Scuba. So, uh, our institute is located about 60 kilometers north from Tokyo. So, just a one hour uh, by train. Uh, first, I'd like to briefly explain our institute. Our institute history is uh, started from 1946 as an institute for war damage reconstruction agents. And uh, so already 70, almost 70 years old. Our organization is not so large, uh, just uh, 85 people are working. And uh, among them 50 persons are researchers. And uh, we are covering very wide area, structural engineering, environmental engineering, <coughs> fire, material production and housing urban planning. And at the end, International Institute of Seismology and Earthquake Engineering is uh, we have the, a kind of seminar and inviting uh, foreign uh, young researchers related on uh, seismology and earthquake engineering. And, uh, we have a one-year seminar for those students. And our budget is uh, not so large, just uh, 20 million dollars per year, and 90% of our budget is coming from the government. So we say our, our research institute is a half governmental, but 90% uh, is coming from the government. That means that our institute is like a governmental research institute. And, uh, the research area are given or assigned by the Minister of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, MLIT, I may call. So they make the research areas. Uh, of course, uh, 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 green innovation is one important topic, and the other one is a secure and safe uh, housing. Uh, this is an uh, uh, area map of our institute and uh, you can find uh, so many laboratories, uh, around 30 laboratories um, uh, we have. Uh, just uh, 50 researchers is managing this uh, huge number of research laboratories. So we are having the cooperative research work with the universities and the other institutes. Okay. And next one is that Okay, 
but the time is limited, so this is how to utilize our research output. Uh, our research output is uh, reflected to the building standard law and its umbrella. So from now, uh, the main topic is earthquake engineering. We already made uh, so earthquake engineering research framework toward research roadmap based on the lessons learned from the 2011 uh, <coughs> Tobago earthquake. This is already published from BRR research papers, uh, which is written in English. So usually the earthquake is, some people is very, uh, said uh, very important, but uh, some people said now is uh, energy is much more important and the environment is much more important. So this is showing the world natural disaster data. So uh, the numbers shown are dead people by the natural disasters. Earthquake and the earthquake induced tsunami produced uh, more than 60% of the people deaths. So of course it is fluctuated. Big earthquake occurs, so the huge number of people die. But anyway, from this uh, data, the importance of the earthquake engineering is clear. And uh, this, uh, this photo is showing four slides, and we experience very, very, very many earthquakes. And, uh, Left, left top is a Kanto earthquake in 1923, and uh, more than 100,000 people died, and 87 percent uh, died by fire induced by the vibrations. And uh, right top is a, a grand failure. Fortunately, in, in our in, in our country, not so many people die by the grand failure due to the uh, earthquake. And the left bottom is a uh, Kobe earthquake in 1995. 6,000 people died, and the uh, building collapse is the main reason for the 83% of deaths. And uh, the recent, most recent earthquake, a uh, Tohoku earthquake in, in 2011, uh, 15,000 people died and by tsunami. 90% died. So you must consider. In our country, fire, building, crops, and tsunami is a, a important uh, issues. Uh, every time we experience a uh, great earthquake, uh, some uh, issue occurs, and uh, we the, uh, we reflect, the react, uh, react, and uh, we change the uh, building standard law. But if we continues. When events occur, then, then the strengthening of building standard usually falls. But uh, if we continue, we cannot construct new buildings. <coughs> so we must make, we must review, uh, for, uh, come back to the uh, what is needed for the people should be considered. So we make a uh, aspect engineering research framework, which is uh, 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 shown like a pyramid, the top is a vision and uh, missions, goals and objectives. And in this table, just uh, shows up to uh, bottom to the uh, objectives. But under those objectives, we may must make the research topics. But I think research topics depend on the countries. Maybe it depends on the economy of each country, and also, uh, it, it, will, it will depend on the culture in each country. So, uh, we would like to uh, other country to, to make uh, the research topics and their objectives, and uh, collect and uh, we would like to publish it uh, in the near future. So, uh, from this, I would like to go to the uh, recent uh, experience in BRI uh, by the earthquake, that is Tohoku earthquake. And uh, at first, uh, I'd like to explain briefly about the Tohoku earthquake. Uh, this is the northern part of Japan's map, and the magnitude is 9.0. And uh, 
there is a rectangular uh, shape is on the screen that is uh, north south is 400 kilometers and uh, west east is uh, middle east is uh, 200 kilometers that is a uh, failure area and the failure started from the star mark and uh, around this failure area uh, we subjected to the uh, very large seismic intensity and this is a uh, uh, JMA, Japan Meteorological Agency's <coughs> intensity is shown, but uh, usually the red color poor part is uh, almost 10 for the uh, modified military scale, maybe you know. And uh, in our institute, we sent our staff, together with a cooperative research institute, uh, these uh, green colored uh, areas and observe the tsunami induced damage and the motion induced damage and also the liquefaction induced damage for the detached houses. Um, unfortunately, red map is a uh, uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, so near that place we cannot access. So from this, these observations, just after the earthquake, we find out the preliminary key issues to be solved. Uh, we have four, long period, long duration, ground motion is one thing. The second one is a liquefaction for detached houses. And the third one is not structures, non-structural elements damage occurred. And the uh, falling down of the roof occurred. So many people died. And also the tsunami damage is also must be considered for the building. And I will show some uh, photos related to these four uh, issues. Uh, this building is the highest building in uh, uh, Osaka area. Osaka is uh, 700 kilometers from the hypocentral area of that ask. 700 kilometers, very far. Still, this building subjected a very big vibration. And our institute uh, set an accelerogram accelerator on this building uh, for uh, four locations. At the top, you can see the full amplitude of the movement is three meters. And it continued 10 minutes. So the people on this building cannot uh, escape from this building, and they must sustain 10 minutes of four, uh, uh, natural period of four, five second uh, movement, and they endure. So anyway, that, this is a one problem. And this is the second pro uh, This is uh, also the problem related to the uh, first problem, a long period problem. So you know base isolation system. So usually base isolation system needs a damper to reduce the uh, response. So this is a, a lead damper. This is uh, made from lead. Lead usually recover its uh, plastic deformation under the uh, ordinary temperature. But uh, uh, this motion, this earthquake, the uh, amplitude is not so big, but uh, it contains so many cycles and the fracture. So that is a problem. Whether these dampers should be depressed by new one after that earthquake or not is a problem. The uh, second one is a uh, uh, liquefaction. Liquefaction, after liquefaction, you know, you you can construct a high-rise building. In that case, you can uh, put a pile. In that case, no problem. But uh, in a detached house, such kind of pile is not usually used. So how to uh, how to react uh, for such kind of liquefaction damage <coughs> program. And this is a, one example of the non-structural element damage and the roof falling down. The first one is a tsunami damage. This reinforced concrete wall is uh, deformed due to the pressure of the tsunami. So these uh, four uh, key issues are uh, uh, take off, uh, take off. And uh, after this earthquake, four years passed, what we did 
is as follows. As for the long period, long duration ground motions, we must consider future great earthquake. So among the number of past large earthquakes, Hosei Hosei earthquake in 1707 <coughs> around Nankai Trough, as shown on this figure, is considered most probable type of earthquake in near future by the study of cabinet office. So uh, we must consider about this earthquake in future. And in Japan, uh, more than 2,500 high-rise buildings and also more than 5,000 base isolated buildings we have. So we must also consider about the existing building for this uh, expected huge earthquake. And of course, by using, by using the difference method, we can calculate the motions, expected motion, but uh, it cannot consider the uh, shorter period, period <coughs> component. So we make an experience-based prediction method by the mean, uh, by our institute, and the uh, uh, experience-based method is uh, shown by the left, and the uh, calculation is uh, shown by the right. So we'd like to propose an uh, engineer to utilize experience-based predictions motions for the design of high-rise buildings. So th this figure is showing the comparison of, of the two, and uh, I would like to briefly mention about how large motion is expected by that earthquake is shown. In case of Tokyo, it is shown left. And uh, there is a gray colored line, two lines, building center road, required line. So in Tokyo, not so different. So no need for this earthquake. But in Nagoya, central part, the, this expected motion is becomes twice. So we must consider much about uh, this kind of motions uh, on this. So we'd like to propose such kind of a much higher spectrum for the design of high-rise buildings and uh, uh, base isolated buildings. And as for the dampers, uh, so uh, fractured, red, fractured red dampers, uh, we counted uh, how much cycle is induced to such kind of a damper, and uh, they, uh, the estimated is uh, shown by the uh, green area. But uh, the red line is a fractured, uh, uh, fractured capacity estimated from the experiment. So 20 to 30, 40 times of uh, extra uh, capacity exists, so that means that we did not uh, necessarily to we don't necessarily to replace them by a new one, even after a total earthquake. That is uh, made clear. And this is an example of other uh, LRB. LRB is a base isolator in the inside of the base isolator, and the damper, red damper, is ins uh, inserted. In this case, also no no need to replace uh, after a total earthquake. That is made clear. And as for the liquefaction uh, uh, react, uh, low-cost liquefaction judgment method is needed for the detached house. So Swedish rate sounding test is a potential tool. It is very cheap. So from that uh, SWS result, we can uh, convert the result to the end value. From uh, for standard penetration test. And also, we need uh, additional two information. One is a water level, and one is a fine fraction content. So by using the hole made by the sweet, uh, SWS, we can uh, uh, get such information. So uh, we propose by using the SWS method, uh, the very cheap uh, liquefaction judgment method is given. But the accuracy is not so enough. So we just propose uh, the owner of the residential house to whether they have the uh, affordable, then uh, uh, please try to utilize this method and check. 
such kind of information is given. And as for the sealing, we made a, a, a sealing in, the, in our institute, and we make uh, some vibration test on the sealing. And if the sealing is uh, connected to the wall, then the pounding occurs. That will produce the uh, uh, falling down of the corruption uh, seal. So uh, such kind of experiment was conducted and uh, it is reflected to the notification. And as for the tsunami, uh, tsunami is a very, uh, so this is the first time for our institute to take uh, considerable tsunami uh, force. And uh, uh, of course, after the earthquake, we go to the coastal line <coughs> and find out many buildings, damaged or undamaged. And also, we can uh, find the depths of the inundation depths from the uh, surface of the buildings. And uh, a red cross is showing the damaged building, and the uh, blue one is not damaged. So from this uh, dashed line, uh, that can be reflected to the design for the, uh, so estimate the tsunami force. So this line is used for the design of tsunami. But of course, if, uh, so in this country, uh, first story is used for the common space. So no wall type of uh, structure exists. In that case, the tsunami is a void, no, no effect at all for the buildings. So, uh, so in that case, how to reduce the tsunami force is a problem. So this kind of uh, uh, purity type of structure is considered and uh, we uh, conducted a simulation, uh, a FEM, a simulation study. And also the uh, buoyancy, uh, buoyancy of the, uh, is also important. So if the building is a uh, lightweight, then, uh, then uh, it will collapse. Have some time. So, okay. So, uh, such kind of uh, uh, analysis and the test is conducted. This is an example of the waterway test uh, simulations, whether the how the inundation length is very long time. So many uh, buildings exist. In that case, uh, inundation height can be reduced or not. Such kind of analysis and the test is conducted. So this is a, this is a one example. So even the first story is used for the pilot, uh, so uh, common space. Some people would like to utilize that space for the office. In that case, they need a wall. But if the inundation occurs, the wall automatically collapses. Then the tsunami force can be reduced. So. Such, ki such kind of idea can be applied in a practical design or not is considered by this kind of test. And these are the, uh, uh, so uh, react after the, uh, the recent large earthquake. And uh, I'd like to add a little bit about our uh, seminar. Our, our institute is having a seminar uh, that is a IISEE activity. And uh, we are having a group training uh, in, in our institute from 1960. Every year, we are inviting 20, around 20 people by using JICA. And uh, up to now, uh, more than 1,700 ex-participants we have. And uh, uh, they are coming from 100 different countries. And uh, this uh, map, you can see the circle. They are showing how many ex-participants are coming from these countries. From Malaysia, so more than 20 people already. And uh, some, of, some of the ex-participants became the minister of their countries. And uh, we have a, a great network. So. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, this kind of uh, uh, activity, then please contact with us. And uh, 